For my birthday last month, my boyfriend was able to snag one of the Hycolis supply boxes for me, and I am so excited about this! I've really been wanting one of these for the longest time. If you're unfamiliar, the artist Hycolis has been doing these launches of supply boxes based off of like a curated selection of her favorite supplies. They're not like any kind of monthly boxes, they're just a one-time purchase box, but they sell out really fast and they're very expensive, so... It's something that I have not been able to purchase on my own, but luckily my boyfriend was able to get one and I was so excited about this box. As soon as he told me he was able to get it, I was like, thank God because I really wanted to try it and like, I've wanted it for a long time. I've wanted to buy a lot of the supplies in this box on my own, so being able to get this, being able to have this was so exciting for me. It's also like, wrapped so nicely. Everything in here is just like packaged with so much love and care and it was just a very enjoyable experience to even unbox this box as a whole. Like I had so much fun. I didn't know initially if I wanted to unbox it on camera because that way I wouldn't have to worry about being in frame and stuff like that but I'm very glad I did because I can relive this unboxing because it was very fun. <laughs> So first thing is this Haikala, uh, it's a custom pencil case. It's really cool. It has her logo on the front and it's made out of completely recycled cardboard, I believe. So that's really cool. And then in here, we got a Pentel pocket brush pen, which I actually already have one of. So I won't even be opening this. I'm going to re-gift it to my friend probably just because there's no point in me using it since I already have one. And then next, we also got this Pentel water brush pen. I believe I have one of these as well, but it's always nice to have one. Hikala herself actually fills these up with ink and uses it like that, so I'm probably gonna do that with this guy in the future. We also got this Masca Pen Masking Fluid. It's basically masking fluid that comes pouring out of a nib and makes it easier to control. We got two erasers, a Tombow Mono, and then this four color plastic eraser. And moving on to the most exciting thing that I think everyone could consider the most exciting thing of this box is these Roar and Clinger inks. They're India inks, they're very pretty, and this box comes with such a nice selection of these inks. I've really wanted to try these in the past, I've just been like deferred by them because they are very expensive. So initially when I started showing interest in inks, I looked into these ones because I knew Hikala used them, but they're really expensive. I don't remember how much they are, but they were so expensive that I did not buy any of them and I instead got the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India inks, which there's nothing wrong with those ones, but uh, it's just a much more budget friendly option. And also something that was so exciting about opening this is the custom tissue paper that she's wrapped a lot of these things in. It's like a custom print of her own artwork and I was very careful to not rip any of this tissue paper. I didn't know what or if I was going to use this tissue paper on anything but I wanted to save it and I still have it saved and uh, I'm gonna save it for something. I'm gonna use it on something, don't know what yet, but it's really pretty and I would feel bad throwing it out. And as you can see, there's still so much to unbox here. This box came with so many art supplies and I was really excited about opening it and just trying everything out because it's a lot of stuff that I've never used before. Next up are these two synthetic Holbein brushes. They're in size zero and size four. Both of them are rounds. And these are really nice brushes because the barrels are made out of acrylic, so they can't crack if you leave them in water like some other brushes do if they have like a wood base. We also got two of these Faber-Castell Polychromos color pencils, which I've wanted to try for a long time, but they're expensive. <laughs> and then this box has this High Tech C Pilot gel pen that was substituted for a Uniball one that's come in previous boxes. I don't know why they're substituted, but it does not bother me at all. Um, we also got this Deleter Pen Neo Pico liner in the size 0.3. And this is absolutely the best fine liner I have because it has the little cat mascot on it. That makes it so much better than all my other fine liners. And we also got this Knicker Poster Color in white, which I was really excited to try because I know a lot of people use white inks instead of like white gel pens, so that was very exciting. And then we also got this uh, masking tape. This was kind of a little additional gift for the fact that the gel pen earlier was switched out. And then we get into paper. So this comes with a Saunders Waterford cold pressed watercolor block, as well as a deleter sketchbook, which is very cute because it has the cat mascot. And that's everything that comes in this box. So as you can see, completely jam packed with art supplies. This box comes with so much and it's really nice because it really sets you up to just start making art. You don't really need anything else. You have pencils, liners, erasers, ink 
two brushes as well as a water brush pen. There's some like convenient things that you could use here and there like a palette or I don't know like just a regular graphite pencil but this box really sets you up to just start going with so many nice art supplies that just make you want to draw. So very first thing of course I had to do was swatch all the supplies that came in this box. I couldn't technically swatch everything like I wasn't gonna swatch the masking fluid because why would I do that? But I was really excited to see how these inks fared. I don't have too much to go off of because I've only ever tried the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India inks. So I really don't have too much to compare to, but right from the get-go, I was really impressed with how vibrant and just very beautiful these colors are. If you're not super familiar with inks, you can pretty much just water them down like watercolors. However, a very important factor about inks is that once they're dry, you can't move them around and they're not going anywhere. They're waterproof, they can't be reactivated, which is really cool and really convenient in terms of layering because you can do very cool layering techniques without worrying about reactivating the ink that's in the bottom layers, like versus with watercolor you'd have to worry about lifting. With inks you can just kind of go for it, which is really nice. So that's pretty much everything I was able to swatch with this. I didn't want to bring out the Saunders Waterford watercolor block until I was actually doing an illustration because it's a very nice paper. So I obviously do not want to waste it because I feel very bad doing so. But this sketchbook was really fun to work with. It's not the thickest paper, it's not like super heavy paper, but it held inks very well and I'm excited to work more in this sketchbook. However, that being said, I have way too many sketchbooks that I'm currently working on, so I'll definitely hold off on actually working in that sketchbook for like finished pieces and just doodling in there for a little bit of time until I can finish working on other things. But as far as the finished piece I wanted to do with these supplies, I wanted to do something very inspired by Heikala's art. She does a lot of sceneries and she tends to incorporate cats here and there, which is something I really like doing because that makes it fun for me. So I decided to just like sketch stuff out and I thumbnailed this tree with lanterns hanging from it as well as this very large giant cat sitting in the tree. I'm not a huge fan of the tree itself because now that I'm looking at the tree I see how very weird it looks but uh, I won't beat myself up too much over it because I don't often draw trees and if anything this is probably one of the nicest looking trees I've ever painted slash drawn so I'll, I'll take what I can get. But the very first thing I did was lay down some of the masking fluid because I knew I wanted the cat to be white and I didn't want any of the color in my initial wash to bleed into the lanterns. So I put the masking fluid in those spots and then I just kind of started painting. I was debating back and forth whether or not I wanted to use masking fluid and tape off the edges of this piece so that way there would just be a white border. But I was having issues actually sketching this. I was always making the tree way too big and honestly I still think it is too big compared to how I like initially thumbnailed the piece and wanted it to look but I just kind of went with it. Uh, I used a lot of wet on wet techniques and it was really fun to just let the ink flow and do what it wanted and I actually didn't use that many supplies that came in the box for this piece. I used both of the polychromos pencils, I used the erasers, I used the masking fluid, and I used the inks. And the brushes as well. I also used my own brushes. But um, I tried using the poster color towards the end and I wasn't a huge fan of it in this piece. I'll play I'll play around with it again in the future, but I didn't use uh, the gel pen, I didn't use the liner, I didn't use the masking tape. So lots of things that I didn't use for this piece, but I just kind of wanted to keep it simple. I also only used a very small selection of the inks that came in this piece. Initially I had planned to do like a nighttime sky in the background and the bark of the tree being brown and the leaves being green, but I actually was smart and I thumbnailed that idea with the colors beforehand and I just really didn't like the way it was looking. I felt like it was not portraying the mood I wanted and the colors just weren't working how I wanted them to. So I decided to just simplify my color scheme as a whole and pretty much go with most of the piece being purple and blue. And I feel like that really helped me coordinate things and just make everything look better as a whole. And it was a lot nicer not so much working with color as it was working with contrast because I wasn't worrying too much about where I was putting colors, especially when it came to the leaves of the tree. I was going back and forth between picking up purple and blue and just layering and layering until it was something I liked. So I had a lot of fun working with these supplies. The watercolor block is such nice paper. It still did buckle, which is 
to be expected because I layered a lot of water and a lot of inks, especially when I was going in with my initial washes. There was a lot of water going on this watercolor paper, but it buckled slightly, but it definitely mellowed out because it was taped down and as it dried, it just kind of balanced out and it's not super buckled, but I really like this watercolor paper. The brushes are also really nice. Pretty much everything, uh, there's nothing in this box that I don't like. The only thing that I was not a huge fan of was the Knicker poster color because I used that for white accents and I felt like it was just a lot easier for me to use a white gel pen compared to using the poster color itself, but I don't dislike the product and I definitely want to use it more in the future to get a more finished opinion on it versus just the one-time opinion. I'm also really excited to use these inks more in the future. Inks are definitely something that, while I don't reach for them super often, I have a lot of fun using them whenever I do. I feel like the color selection that I got in this box with these inks is a lot better of a color selection than I have with the ones I own already. The Dr. P.H. Martin's ones I own, I got it in the big like color wheel if you've ever seen it. It comes with a dozen colors of pretty much the whole rainbow, but I don't know, I really like the colors that came in this box. They're very similar, but they're slightly different. So I'm very happy with these inks. They're a very good addition to my collection. I also at one point decided I was going to make the cat look like it was glowing like the lanterns and I'm not realizing this until I'm watching this footage back but I put the like glowing yellow bits to the outside of the cat versus when it came to the lanterns I did that on the inside so I actually just took white ink and I went over the cat and covered up the yellow that I did but I should have put it on the inside because I feel like then it would have actually looked like it was glowing. I did it on the outside and then I didn't like how it looked so obviously it's gone I covered it but I never realized that I did it backwards compared to how I did the lanterns. I'm only realizing that now, but uh, it's fine. I think the cat still looks nice being in the tree. I really like the contrast of the lanterns and the cat being in there, how they pop really well. I'm also very proud of myself for how I did the glow on the outside of the lanterns. I just did a wet on wet technique and I let it fade out and then I painted the insides of them. I'm very proud of how that looks. I wasn't super happy with this piece until I went in with a white gel pen though. I feel like just adding that little like white here and there really helped make the piece look better, I guess. Not that I think it looked bad to begin with, but I just felt like it needed something else going on and that white ink definitely saved the day for me, as it has many times in the past. And I know I have a palette knife somewhere, which is, I think, technically how you're supposed to take paper off of watercolor blocks, but I have no idea where my palette knife is and I was not going to start looking for it, so I just used one of the backs of the Holbein brushes that came in this box, and it's nice because they have that edge, so first of all that was made it really easy to peel off the masking fluid, but it also makes it really easy to take this paper off of a block. This is how my finished piece ended up turning out though. I'm fairly happy with the outcome of it, I think it's really cute, and I'm really excited to use these supplies again in the future. Especially the stuff that I didn't touch too much when I was actually doing my finished piece. I'm really excited to use those more slash use them to begin with outside of swatching. I'm very grateful to have gotten this box to begin with. It's something that I never really foresaw myself getting, so it was a lot of fun to play with and I'm really looking forward to using the supplies again in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.